We talked about case law, but shifting to trends, what do you think the big trends in e-discovery will be this year? I think mobile device discovery is going to be significant. I think we're seeing so much information out of there. I think that generative AI is absolutely something that is taking over the conversation. I think it's going to be a bit of time before we see a lot of that in e-discovery. I think lots of folks are working on integrating AI into their tools so that you can use that technology to gain insights into the data you already have. And so some tools have already integrated that. We used ChatGPT to create summaries of all 35,000 decisions in the Discovery Assistant. So summarization is a really key use of, of Gen AI right now. But I think there's a lot to keep an eye on in that area from that perspective. So those are some major areas. I really think the trend that we saw in looking at the case law from 2023 which Courts kind of looking at the rules and the language of the rules and saying, hey, this isn't really supporting the way business is being done anymore. So we're going to look at what the thought process is behind this language of the rule and applying it. I think that's going to have significant implications, how parties have to prepare for litigation and how they're thinking about these various topics in particular. Mm -hmm our information from mobile devices. Thank you for that. It would be interesting to see how it shapes up this year. Since it's 2024, we're required, as we have been doing, to talk about Gen AI. Talk about how you use Gen AI. We use largely the summarization features for eDiscovery Assistant. And mm -hmm. what we do is we use just the body text of the decisions in order to generate a summary. And yeah. a couple of the issues that people have raised necessarily associated with what we do at eDiscovery Assistant, but generally with AI is both hallucinations and the accuracy of the summarization of the information. And there are quite a few issues that you have to pay attention to for those purposes. We found in creating summaries of the decisions, anytime we have an appellate decision, which if you're familiar with the discovery case law, you know that most of it's at the trial court level, but we do have appellate decisions. And anytime there was a concurrence or a dissent, the AI would look at the very last ruling at the bottom. Mm. Oh, oh, wow. <laughs> if there was a concurrence or a dissent, right, it was pulling from the dissent. So we had to- <laughs> Talk about recency, recency bias. <laughs> right, recency bias. I don't know anyone's coined that one, Darren. That's nice. There are a lot of things you really have to pay attention to. We noticed the other day, Strangely enough, the Maryland Court of Appeals changed their name last year. So we have cases in the database that are from the Maryland Court of Appeals under the old name and then the new name. And when the system ran a summary for a decision that was issued under the new name, it actually used the old name and saying the Maryland Special Court of Appeals did blah, 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 which wasn't correct. And it was something that our team caught. And we haven't really figured out how that came in because that information isn't in the database where the body text would have been drawn from. So I think there's so many details that you have to pay attention to. We've seen a lot this year discussions of lawyers using chat GPT or other AI tools yes. for legal research. I will be the person to say they are not legal research tools. Please do not use them for legal research. Yeah. But there are lots of tools that are working to become legal research tools with AI built in. I know that the larger research tools have rolled out some of their own developments from that perspective. There are startups like Describe AI, Paxton AI, AnyLaw, who are all working to provide legal research with those AI tools built in as well. So be sure to be checking out some of the new things that are out there and available. 